there's the, all kinds of potential for unknown animals out there. And I love the diversity of cryptozoology. Most people focus on Bigfoot, the rock star as I call him, but something like a giant salamander, actually there's a lot of probability there, I think. You know, we know there are giant salamanders in the world right now uh, that are described and documented in similar habitats to this. I mean, this is probably very much like, you know, the, the mountain rivers of, of China and Japan where giant salamanders exist. So I think that, you know, gives it a lot of credibility and uh, working with a great team. Everyone's got a different skill set and a different expertise. And we're just trying to combining all of our talents and, and skills together and seeing what we can find. To me, this was a very intriguing possibility that there may be some kind of large uh, salamander that might have escaped documentation. And I was always fascinated by these stories. Well, I think there's something to it because, again, the environment would give it that kind of creature everything it needs, and the number of reports and the number of people that have shown interest in it and actually gone out looking, um, I guess it could be a new species. That's always a possibility. We're here looking for the Trinity Alps giant salamander which is a uh, local cryptid here up in the Trinity Klamath area. And uh, me personally, I've been doing uh, projects with uh, mapping uh, these historic areas where people see Bigfoots and things. And I've come across several publications and writings regarding uh, another local creature that was uh, sighted up here. And there was considerable effort in the 1950s and 60s to locate these species. Uh, this was done by uh, Stanford, Berkeley, and uh, uh, Chico State University. And they really thought that uh, these things were around. So back then they formed several expeditions to come up here. And there hasn't really been much interest since, uh, since then. So I thought it would be interesting to revisit the work and revisit the sites and not necessarily do uh, so much of a cryptid search, but more of a historical search of the area to kind of see uh, the process uh, that they went through. When it comes to alleged species that might not be known to science, that catches my attention as an investigative reporter as a citizen scientist who doing what I can to look into these mysteries, this definitely was something that I felt I could bring something to help document the effort of this expedition in a way that maybe hasn't been done before. We brought these um, to prevent bear and mountain lion getting too close to us. We tried it with Sally earlier and not much happened. We can try again now. Ready? And that was about the same effect it had earlier this morning. <laughs> well, this is a, a, an amazingly old growth forest. I mean, this is like one of the original North American forests that's still untouched, relatively untouched by, by human hand. And, um, you know, this is like, it's like being in an ancient world, really, when you're out here, like a lost world, like the Pleistocene or something. My name is Jim Whitehead. My name is Jason Conce Coburn. My name is Jamie Wayne. My name is Daniel Allen Jones. Well, my name is Ken Gerhard. I am honored to be a widely recognized cryptozoologist, and I've traveled all over the world looking for mysterious animals, including Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, Black Panthers, the Beast of Jebedam, Thunderbirds. I want this to serve as an inspiration to other investigators and researchers out there that may have, it doesn't have to be giant salamanders, you have, may have another cryptid or mysterious animal that you're interested in, but um, you know, we wanted to inspire people in terms of you know, just doing it. If you're gonna go out and look for something, put your best foot forward and you know, put some thought, you know, make it a thoughtful process where you're really coming up with good ideas and, and you're you know, arming yourself with the right tools to get the job done.
Okay, so when you're barbecuing out at Bluff Creek, what else could you have but Lyle Blackburn's hot sauce? I put this shit on everything. Ooh, can you give me some Lyle Blackburn's hot sauce? Yes, sir. All I right, want some please. We're, we're doing a we're doing a Lyle Blackburn hot sauce tasting right here. Oh yeah. You guys want some Lyle Blackburn's monster sauce? 